Chemical charge is an important way of keeping track of electrons in organic chemistry. Formal charge compares the number of valence electrons a free atom has with the number of valence electrons present in the Lewis structure. The important detail here is that we assume 100% covalency. One hundred percent covalency means that each atom involved in a bond gets exactly half of the bonding electrons. So if we have atom X bonded to atom Y, well, this bond is two electrons, and atom X gets one of them, and atom Y gets the other. So you could draw a circle around atom X that bisects the bond and a circle around atom Y that bisects the bond. And you count the electrons that are inside the circle. For lone pairs, they belong 100% to the atom that they are associated with. So when you have a carbon atom with four bonds, there are four electrons inside that box, and the formal charge on that carbon equals four minus four, or zero, right? Carbon's group 14, so it has four valence electrons. And then carbon gets one of each of the bonding pairs, or one electron from each of the bonding pairs. And that's what this number is. On the other hand, if you have a carbon with three bonds and one lone pair, there are one, two, three, four, five electrons inside that circle. And so we have formal charge equals four minus five equals negative one. This is what we call a carbanion. And we want to symbolize that formal charge on that carbon atom with a minus sign inside a circle. A quick way to remember how to calculate formal charge is to use the formula formal charge equals valence, which is the number of valence electrons in the free atom, minus the dots minus the lines. Now the dots represent the lone pairs, and the lines represent the bonds. And so that gives you the number that you need to subtract. And valence is, of course, referring to the free atom. It's useful to be able to do this calculation, but you'll also find it useful to memorize the bonding environments and the formal charges that go with them for carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and the halogens. So we'll start with carbon. Neutral carbon has four bonds. It can be four single bonds, or it can be a double bond and two single bonds, or it can be two double bonds, or it could even be a triple bond and a single bond. The important thing is that there are four bonds. Now let's look at a carbanion. A carbanion has three bonds and one lone pair. So we can do a lone pair and three single bonds, or we could do a lone pair and a single bond and a double bond, and we indicate that it's a carbanion with the negative sign, or we could even have a single bond to a carbon to a lone pair. A carbocation is a carbon with a plus one charge. And this is a carbon that has three single bonds and zero lone pairs, like this. Or sometimes you'll see it in a bond line structure, like that. That indicates that there is only one implied hydrogen attached to the, attached to the central carbon. 
instead of two, as you would normally have. Now, you may be wondering, why does a carbocation have to have three single bonds? Why couldn't it have a double bond and a single bond and a lone pair? Let's look at that. And this would be called a vinylic carbocation, since the carbon is involved in a double bond. So why isn't this allowed? Well, the steric number is 3, so that gives us sp3 hybridization. And since it's a carbocation, that means instead of having four valence electrons, it has three. Here's the lone pair, here's one, and here's one. And then we'd make the bonds by putting in other electrons like this. And the problem with this is that we have an inverted bonding scheme now. It's not that this is impossible, it's just that it is unstable. So, carbocations will have three single bonds. Next we'll deal with oxygen. Neutral oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs. So we can accomplish that with two single bonds and two lone pairs, or a double bond and two lone pairs. With the two single bonds, we are sp3 hybridized. With the double bond, we are sp2 hybridized. Both of these are okay. For an oxonium, that is an O with a positive charge, we'd have to have three bonds and one lone pair. So we can either have three single bonds and a lone pair, or we can have a double bond and a single bond and a lone pair. Both of those are okay. An oxyanion is an O with a negative charge. That means it's going to have one bond and three lone pairs. Like so. A neutral nitrogen will have three bonds and one lone pair. So we can have three single bonds and one lone pair, or we can have a double bond and a single bond and a lone pair, or we can even have a triple bond and a lone pair. An amide ion is N minus, and we typically see that with two single bonds and two lone pairs. And it's sp3 hybridized, so maybe it's better to draw it like this. An ammonium cation is a nitrogen with a plus charge, and that's the same bonding environment as a neutral carbon. So, four bonds, zero lone pairs. And we can do it, sorry, four single bonds, or we can do one double and two singles, or we could even have a triple and a single. Halogens, we'll just use the symbol X to represent fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And in order to be neutral, a halogen will have one bond and three lone pairs. A halide anion has zero bonds and four lone pairs. Like so. For instance, the fluoride ion in your toothpaste.
So notice, all of these bonding environments adhere to the octet rule except for one, and that is the carbocation, which has a sextet. This makes carbocations uniquely unstable. This means that resonance structures that contain a carbocation will be the least important resonance contributors to the resonance hybrid. Just keep that in mind. We'll talk more about that later.